Yeah, morning, folks. It's um definitely a bit early in the morning for me after a long drive. So uh, drove up from the south of England last night, and uh, we got here to the uh, the northeast coast of Scotland very, very late last night, and oh, still tired. Still haven't adjusted um yeah okay what's the story well i decided to sell up down south and move up to the northeast of scotland it's um a bit closer to where the family came from originally or at least my grandmother's side of the family we're um from up in this area, sort of Aberdeenish area, on her side of the family, and uh, I came up because we got the chance to buy a farm. Hello, front door's wide open. Who's that? Who's done that? Um, maybe the wife's been out and about. Right, so yeah, hot air balloon. Huh? Suppose you've got to take advantage of the calm air early in the morning. Well, I'm looking at those uh, wind generators down there. Must be a fair breeze blowing to keep, get them turning at that speed. He's taking a bit of a risk then. Um, yeah. So, sold up down south. Made a fair bit of money. Because I had the main house and a house that uh, we were renting out giving us a rental income to pay for the main house and uh, got a bit of startup cash and got myself to used I mean it's not brand new it's about five six years old got myself a, a good, very good condition Land Rover Defender unfortunately it's left-hand drive so it's an import and uh, got a trailer to put all the immediate needs gear in i'll leave the wife to unload that in fact i better while i'm on about it i better unhook the trailer just so that she can get in oops didn't mean to do that hey come on move back all right unhook it move forward get out of the car there we are now she can get in at the trailer and she can Get all her bits and pieces, you know, kettles and stuff like that. Oh, hopefully she'll make breakfast. I don't know where she's gone. She may be gone for a wander to get her bearings. Let's have a look around the house. So, uh, we've got a, an animal feed bin here marked out. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. If we're going to rear chickens, we'd have to do it initially in our back garden. Now, speaking of the back garden, that tree's got to go. The kids will be up and down that like koala bears. And one of them's bound to fall out and break an arm or something. So that tree's got to go. Probably a good idea to take the lower branches off this one. Yeah, it's looking a bit droopy. I think take the lower branches off that one as well. Uh, same with that one. Get rid of the lower branches. And what have we got out here then? Uh, one of the paddocks. Now then. That's going to have to go. That's going to have to go. All of these trees are going to have to go. I'm going to have to get a, a timber guy in. Oh, all that scrap wood's got to go. Oh, what's all this up here? Um, Yeah, so this is uh, Gatehead Farm. And... Uh, we got two arable fields and four small paddock type fields like this plus a large um, cow paddock to go with the dairy half of the farm yeah all of this stuff's gonna have to get cleared up and I wonder if I can get a scrap man to come and buy all of this lot yeah we'll try it um, what's the story over here then have a look at these trees they're looking a bit rough uh 
they're not fruit trees anyway. Um, so I think probably get rid of all of that lot. Now that's, that's the edge of our land here where these weeds are. Or the wildflowers, I should call them, not weeds. Um, yeah, so our land sort of runs through... Edge of our land runs through the middle of this band of wildflowers, and then on that side of it, it belongs to another farm. Uh, but yeah, all of this lot... I'll have to have words with the council, just make sure it's okay to clear this lot. I would imagine it is. Um, got to get rid of them. It's all got to go. So that we can make use of this bit of land. Same with those trees over there. If there's a tree dead on the boundary like that one at the front corner, I'll hang on to it. A um, couple of these up here that are on the edge of the field. I guess if I... Um, in fact, these ones are defining the edge of the field. I guess if I took the lower branches out so that the tractors and what have you are not going to catch on them, then we could keep those few. This is uh, another one of our paddocks. This nice grass meadow, this, but this would actually make a nice smaller crop field. I have to get rid of these scrub trees, though. They're eating up too much of the land. And they've got to go. Oh, squeeze through that hedge. Oh, God. Ow. Scratch. Itch. Um, let's just have a look in here. And we'll just close that fence. Close that gate again. Right. So, again, same story here. The edges of the fields have been left to encroach with these all these trees. It's the problem with that new Countryside Act that introduced the requirement to provide habitat for wildlife. Um... Yeah, any that are encroaching too far into the field are going to have to go. We've got to get this farm profitable as quickly as possible. We've got very limited funds. Um, the wife and I have got a little bit in our personal accounts that we're keeping back as personal savings. Yeah, you see, the, this run of trees are okay. I can just take the lower branches off them. And that'll let us work the field as close as we can to the edge of it. Probably the same with all those ones across there. Although there might be one or two in that corner that need to go. I'll um I'll have words with the local tree doctor. Um have we got a gap in this hedge that I can squeeze through? Uh, looks to be one there. It's a bit thin and raggy. It looks like a tractor's bumped into there at some point. Yeah, it was uh, ow. Ouch! Got through. Uh, Cuts and grazers everywhere. Right, so this is our... Is this our main cow meadow? Or is it the next one down? No, this is our main cow meadow. Um, so this is where the cows would get turned out to every morning. Now, I'm not going to be get. No, it's not. I'm telling lies. I'm misleading you. It's the next... It is the next one down. It's the cow meadow. So this one is either a grass field or a crop field, depending what we want to do with it. Not so much work on the trees in this one, which is great. There's a couple here where some of the lower branches need to go. But a, and maybe down in that corner the same. Um, yeah, excellent. Right, how do I... Can I squeeze through here? Or fight past these... Oh, these... Yeah, there's a couple here that's got to go. Um, i just uh, clamber over that. Ugh. I'm not sure. No, it's not a gate. It's definitely fencing. Hmm. Interesting. Right. Um, yeah, this is the cow meadow. Now, I'm not going to be putting cows in straight away. I want to have a word with the Highlands and Islands Development Board. Um, I'm going to be trying to get some grants off them for um, re-establishing dairy because... You might be aware that the UK dairy industry got decimated about 12 years back. Maybe a little longer than that, maybe 15 years, um, due to nationwide foot-and-mouth problems. Um, 
Although a lot of us reckon it was more the politicians with foot in mouth rather than foot and mouth. Um, so, getting the dairy industry and the beef industry back up and running is rather tricky. Now, my understanding is that this was a working dairy farm up until about three years ago. So it looks like this one survived the foot and mouth um, issue. And I'm just thinking, you know, that's a big old paddock. I'll need to check how many cows can be handled by this uh, this dairy barn here. Because I might be able to use part of that field for arable. Or at least for uh, for grass and silage. Um, but, you know, this barn's not in a bad nick. I did, did get hold of the local young farmers uh, after I'd come up to, to buy it. Um, and it was, you know, it was pretty grubby and dirty and rough. They've, they've done a not too bad job of cleaning it up, although obviously the crows and somebody else have been in because they've got straw pecked out and all over the floor. Um, that's a silage mixer. No, it's not. It's a total mixed ration mixer. Hmm, okay. Forage mixer, whatever you want to call it. Um... So they've done a pretty good job of cleaning up in here, which I'm pleased about. I mean, there's a few odds and ends like that pallet and that wheelbarrow and these bits and pieces that could go across to the workshop, get them out of the way. Uh, come on, gate. Right. Um, yeah. So, and this is the... Uh, the dairy shed. I think it's this door we open. Yeah. Kind of awkward to get in there. That door doesn't open fully. What? Maybe it just needs a shaving off the bottom. Let it open properly. It looks like it's catching on the floor. Um. Yeah. So this is the uh, homogenizing, the pasteurizing end of the the process. This is where the the milk gets sterilized and what have you before it goes off in the tanker so we'll just discover this farm together as we're going around okay that builder's rubble's got to go um, and unless that pallet is there to stop animals wandering between the sheds then that's got to go as well uh, there's more scrap metal up here I mean, obviously, we've got to keep the cattle cages. But, um... Bits of timber all over the place. Don't know what this is. Good as from something. And... Um, well, that's... That's completely kiboshed. That can go to the scrap man. I mean, that's not a bad condition trailer, but don't believe we can make use of that so yeah it's a bit small for us so what I'll probably do is I'll probably sell that trailer off to the local um, dealership you know even if I can only just get a couple of grand for it then it'll help to get the farm established that's scrap that metal looks like scrap that's good timber I might sell that to the local sawmill cement mixer put that in the workshop yeah yeah you see we've got all sorts of little bits like this lying around which is just scrap metal obviously the um, the leftovers from years and years of working the farm and nobody ever thought to move them out there's another pallet of it across there look so yeah we'll get them sold off let's have a look what's in here Oh, yeah, the silos. Yeah. Now, this, these are... They're not in bad nick. We checked these out, had the surveyor in to inspect the inside of them, see if they needed any cleaning or repair work or anything, and nope, they're fine. 
um, the overspill tray and the 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 conveyors and everything all working fine. So they're not particularly huge capacity these ones. And again, you wouldn't expect it with them being stuck inside a shed. Um, I believe it's about a hundred thousand liters between the two of them. And they can only take basic grains like uh, wheat and barley and canola. So they're not, um, f you know, multi-fruit um, silos at all. So I'll have to get a... I have to look into positioning a multi-fruit silo somewhere for handling other things. Um, good big generator there. Had the electricians out inspect that. It's all working fine. Um, bring the door down. Alright, what else have we got? Let's have a look around. Uh, so we looked in there. That's all the cow barns. Uh, oh, water trailer. That's always useful. Yeah. And I still haven't decided what to do with this building. I remember looking at this when I came up to view the place before I bought it, and I thought to myself, hmm, what do I do with this? I mean, it's kind of saying that, you know, I can store something in there, like maybe wood chip or something which may overall be the best use for it, or maybe potatoes, sorted potatoes. Yeah, maybe premium potatoes in one side and washed potatoes in the other side. That could actually be a good in fact, even better over here, look. Floor's a bit wonky, probably need to do with getting that leveled out. Get the cement crew in, get that floor leveled out. Otherwise, we're going to end up with puddles of water and stuff in there in the winter when the condensation starts. Yeah, I have to get that done. Um, yeah, could use one side of this for um, sorted potatoes. The other side of it for washed potatoes. That would work. Um, could then maybe use that for beets or turnips or something. Uh, and that way I can get... God, that was loud. <laughs> uh, use this for vehicles, maybe, or whatever vehicles are involved with the potatoes and the turnips. Yeah, could do that. That's a round... B yeah, that's a round baler. Yeah, I prefer square bales, but never mind. Saves us buying one. And again, that floor, there's a valley on that floor. We need to get that leveled off. I think the easiest way, you know, just move that um, baler out. Put a, um, a little berm along all the doors and just get a, a cement mixer truck to come in and dump a load of self-leveling concrete out. Just uh, give it a hand to, to spread itself out, and then leave it to settle and harden. It's probably going to be the easiest way. I mean, we're fairly lucky. We've got about a month before we can do any arable farming. Because the weather's just too cold for any planting at the moment. Uh, yeah, this yard's not the most level of yards, but it'll do for now. We can maybe... Mind you, there's a canny slope over there on the corner of that barn. Whoa. That could prove fun and games bringing in large trailers around that corner. Um, yeah. We, um, we've got about a month before we can do any arable planting. Now, we can obviously plough the field. We can lime it and fertilize it and all the rest of it before then but we can't put any seed in the ground for at least a month because it's just too cold so yeah you see we've got the four doors there for this barn makes it ideal yeah two doors here for putting vehicles into there 
And then two doors up there, for one each for those two storage bins. Perfect. Right. Um, what's this? That looks like an old diesel station. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like looks like that was diesel. Hang on, let me just climb up on this tank a minute. God, I'm getting old, I can't get up there. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Take a run at it. Um yeah, I'm guessing that that's no longer functional and never will be again. So maybe we can get the scrap people to take that away or I don't know we'll have to see they might complain that it's a, a health hazard um, get that straw moved across with all the other straw that's over there somewhere that we saw um, don't know what these bags are the smell off them is not great they'll have to go these IBCs they look empty. They'll probably have to go. Might get a deposit bag off them. There's normally about a 60 quid deposit on each of these, you know. So we might be able to get some money back off them. Now, what are these silos? They they, uh, they look non-functional. They're not really connected up to anything. We'll have to test them out and see what it is. More metal for the scrap man. Um... Another IBC that's empty. Oh, look at this. I was hoping that the young farmers would clear all this sort of stuff up when they were here tidying up for me. There's another pile there, look. Um, what we got in here? Did they clean this out? Eh, well, there's a lot less rubbish in here because the floor was absolutely covered. So they've sort of... They've removed what was obviously rubbish and left what they weren't sure about, which is fine. What do we got up here? Uh, well, these seem dry and in good condition. I'm guessing that's potatoes or turnips. One of the two. Um, right, we got... What we got over here? We've got a... Uh, subsoiler with cultivator on the back three meter not the biggest but depending on its horsepower requirements it'll probably do the job for us uh that's a tedder again it doesn't look like the biggest maybe a five meter possibly a six meter looking at its uh model number a uh, rostel mash Nova 330. Now, if I remember rightly, and I could be wrong here, working off memory, well, that's a Power Stream 500, so that's a 5 meter header. Um, I think that the 330 has a 3,500 liter hopper or bin, whatever you want to call it, tank. So. God, this needs a good clean and service by the look of it. Yeah, I think we'll probably get the guy from the dealer to come down. And we'll clean this up. We'll get a uh, jet wash in and we'll give it a damn good clean up. And then we'll get the guy from the... Uh, there's the ladder. We'll get the guy from the dealership to come down and give it a good going over before we even try to take put it on the road to take up to them. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, got a tractor here. John Deere 6145M. Ah, poo. I did misremember on this. I was thinking it was the, the um, next model range up. Uh, the problem with this set of John Deere tractors is that you cannot put a three-point linkage and PTO on the front. They don't have the fixings for it, so this assembly here, you can't put one of them on the front. And the biggest engine that you can put in them is only about a 150 horsepower. 
Now, the problem with that is that I was hoping we could put a, uh, a PTO and three point on the front and use this with a, a bigger engine in order to run the mowers for mowing the grass to make silage and uh, hay. So we can't. I'm going to have to exchange this. However, if we clean that up and give it a good servicing, which we can do, we've got a workshop across on the other side of the barn there. Uh, we can do that on the farm. Give this a good clean up and a good servicing. We can trade this in against something like a brand new case 7250, which will give us front and rear three points with PTOs. It'll give us the uh, wide tyres with wheel weights and all the rest of it. And it'll also... Um, it, it'll give us about... I can't remember the exact horsepower off the top of my head, but I think it's about 250 or 260 horsepower on the case, on the 7250. Now, if we ask the dealers to have a hunt around, if we tell them the spec of case that we want and ask them to make some phone calls, it's possible they can get us a used one and we'll be able to... Um, Make a profit, shall we say, on uh, on this tractor, because we should getting a used um, case seven two five zero. We should be able to get more for this tractor than we would pay for the used case. That's a possibility. Um. Right, now this is a 3 metre driller, cedar cultivator. Advantage of it is it cultivates and seeds at the same time, but it doesn't fertilise. And obviously you can't tow anything behind it. There's no tow hitching behind it for a, a fertiliser spreader. And you can't put that onto the back of anything either. Um, so, unless we could get it, in fact, you can't even get a mod kit. I uh, was looking at them bolts there and thinking if we could get a mod kit to change this hookup, we might be able to put a, just a regular towing eye on there and tow it behind a, some sort of sp um, fertilizer spreader. But I've just noticed the fixings of it go down onto the axles between those wheels, so no. Um, these things are expensive, very expensive. We might be able to sell this and fund a cedar cum fertilizer because a three meter cultivator really is not a lot of use to me. We've already got a three meter cultivator over there on the back of the subsoiler, so I, if if the finances work right, I would sell again, clean it and fix it up, sell this, and get in something like a six meter uh, cedar fertilizer, a planter basically, and look at something like an eight or nine meter um, passive cultivator. Might the finances might work out on that. We've got loads of seeds here. Fertilizers, what do we got? We've got a thousand liters per pallet. We've got eight pallets. We've got eight pallets of solid fertilizer as well. Nice, gives us a start. Two of my favorite bits of kit, especially come late spring when everybody's wanting their weeds suppressed. Um. Again, this is a reason we need a tractor with a front and rear three-point and PTO. And I pre normally prefer to give this its own dedicated tractor so that we're not taking it off and putting it on all the time. We just leave it on permanently. 
Um, but again, finances, we've got to think about that and how it stacks up. Let's have a look. What we got? Oh, there's another animal trailer that we can sell to the scrap man or the dealer. It's, uh, yeah, that's a little bit too far gone for me to clean up and service and get operational. I think uh, selling that off, maybe the dealer will take it. Uh, maybe the scrap man will. And we've got another tractor here. Oh, we've got a roller. Excellent. That. I'm looking. That roller is... I mean, it just needs a good clean and possibly a paint job. And it'd be as good as new. That roller's looking a bit rough at this end. Some pitting in there. But, you know, it's... It's serviceable. It's usable. I certainly wouldn't be throwing that away. And I'm not sure what width that is. I think that's a three meter, maybe a three and a half meter. It's good enough for sorting out the edges of the fields. And what have we got here? An armor track 104, 1104. Hmm... Oh, and again, it's one of those ones that can't get a PTO and three-point on the front. It's stuck with just the single three-point and tow hitch on the back. Now, these are quite expensive little tractors. They're not very powerful. They're about 100 horsepower-ish, maybe 110. Which is enough for towing the trailers and stuff around. You, don't get me wrong. Um, but if it was... If it had the ability to mount a three-point on the front, this would be the perfect little tractor to put the spray units on permanently. Just change the wheels to narrow wheels and leave them on it and just keep this one purely for spraying. But, again, I could sell this one. Probably get somewhere in the region of... Well, I don't know, 80,000? Maybe 85,000 for it-ish. Um, and I could get one of the new Deutzfars fully tricked out with twin PTOs. Um, I could get one of them for about 50,000, which would give leave me with about an extra 35 in the bank. Or I could go for maybe something like one of the McCormicks. Um, that would give... That's a little bit less. It's about... 46, 47,000. So give me an extra three or 4,000 to stay in the bank. Um, and if necessary, it does give me the flexibility of a tractor with front and rear three points and PTOs and all, a bigger engine. Uh, even the McCormick is 130 something horsepower compared to this, which is about 110. And I don't think the engine's upgradable on that one. 110 is what it's stuck with. There's another cement mixer. Good God. You know, two of them. We've got one over there. We've got one here. We could put one in each end of that um, hall across there and just keep filling it with a mix for self-leveling concrete and tipping it out. We might not need a cement truck. Uh, it's a shame it's not autumn time because we've got all this crap timber lying around. We could give it to the the local kids for making their bonfire for Guy Fawkes night. I presume this lot is to do with, yeah, these are the silage pits, so and there's more tires there, so yeah, we've got to find a way to stack all them tires up neatly. Um, that's more an OCD thing than anything else. They don't have to be stacked up neatly, but it's better. Uh, right, more for the scrap man. Another IBC to get a deposit off. Those drums looking good, Nick. Might be worth hanging on to them. There's a little generator. Uh, another cattle cage. I'm really not sure about this. There's more modern and better tools than that. Um, really not sure what we would use that for. With all the modern stuff that we got. More scrap metal. I'll have to get the... Uh, I saw a sign on the uh, motorway on the way up. 
not too far, about 10, 15 miles south of here, there's a, a place that buys scrap pallets and used pallets. I have to get them to come up because that's about four or five stacks of pallets that I've seen dotted around the place. Uh, well, that's thrown a tread. I guess that's for the scrap heap. Um, not sure what we're going to do with that bath. The bottom's rusted out of it. Right, so that's the uh, the main yard. Oh, I've got this to look at. Oh, plenty of firewood for the house there, look. There's another pallet, uh, another stack of pallets. There's my diesel tank. Looks like it holds a decent supply. Um, there's a pallet truck. What have we got across here? A couple of hand pump water troughs. I wonder if they function. Can't tell if they're plumbed in or not. Be great if they did. Some more bales. Um, again, I. No, I think that's going to go to the scrap man. You prefer to use more modern tools. Um, these are useful. They look like sa yeah, they're sapling boxes. Hmm, could get some forestry going. Right, okay, well, we've got one shed left to have a look inside, which is this one. This is the workshop. Got its own three-phase generator. There's some hoses and stuff lying around. Uh, a battery trailer for jump-starting the equipment. Workbenches, bench press. Uh, more pallets, look, and another pallet truck. Bit of storage there. More scrap metal up the top. Decent selection of workbenches and tools and stuff. Welding kit, MIG welder. Um, more diesel drums. We'll have to get them all stacked out somewhere. Really not sure what these are for. They look like weights, probably for tarpaulins. Um, that smells like turnips. Might be. Okay, turnips or Swedes, one of the two. Right. And another pallet truck. So we got what, one, two, one, two, at least three pallet trucks. Uh, even so, I'd still rather use a, f a front loader on a tractor. Another big stack of timber. Another round bale. Decent grain trailer there. Right, so we know what we've got to work with. And we're going to have to think about getting all of this cleared out. Get the young farmers in to do some of the humping and dumping for me. And get hold of the scrap man. Get hold of the local um, chemical place. See if they want these IBCs. Get that pallet place a call to come and get all of these pallets. Um... Oh, there's, there is one place we didn't look at. Do a bit of jogging. Wife will be pleased getting all this exercise. Um, yeah, we forgot to have a look up here. What do, what do we got up here? Oh, that'll be good for putting hay bales in. It's a good baling barn. Uh, <laughs> that has had it. <laughs> It's a, a diesel truck by the look of it, i.e. carrying diesel, not just diesel in, not just diesel powered. Yeah, that's well and truly had it. Might be able to find an enthusiast, stick it on eBay, see if somebody wants to come and get it. Um, this rubble's got to go. All of these scrub, tr well, some of these scrub trees need cut back out the way. Uh, what else have we got up here? Rocks, rubble, all got to go. A couple of more trees to go, more scrap metal for the scrap man, and then we're back into that field that we started at. More scrap metal there. So, I'm going to have to go make some phone calls and round up some work crews and get things organised. And as soon as that's underway, I need to think about replacing. Initially, I would have, I think I probably just. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably have to 
use those two tractors for a day or two until the dealership can get me some replacements. Well, that's an accident waiting to happen. Gonna have to move that somehow. Or somewhere, I should say. Um, yeah, I'll probably have to use these two tractors for a day or two until the dealership can get me replacements sorted out. Um, we don't need a cedar for at least three or four weeks. So it gives me plenty of time to sort out a replacement for that thing. Um, oh, that's a point. We need to look at those two arable fields just before we go. And that'll be the last thing that we do in today's um, vlog. Oh, hey, see, I'm getting fitter already. I can jump over low walls. Um, that one's a bit high to jump over. <laughs> right, so this is my arable field number one, which as you can see at the minute is growing grass. And if I get my magic machine out that I got down in London, where is it? There it is. Uh, it tells me it's one third grown and it's got plenty of juice in it. But for some reason it's still showing that from the GPS hook up to the land records, still showing as belonging to the previous occupier. So I'll have to chase up the land office and get the land deeds transferred over a little bit quickly. Get the uh, solicitor to give them a boot. This is my other arable field, which as you can see has been cropped. So it was barley according to the machine. Yeah, it was barley. It needs ploughing, it needs lime. Yeah, and you notice my uh, trendy Husqvarna chainsaw that I brought up from down south as well. <laughs> um, came prepared. This field's going to be a bit of a pain because it's got those two telegraph poles in the middle of it, creating little islands that have to be worked around. Not much I can do about that, I'm afraid. But we'll see. There are a few trees in the margins that probably could do with getting cut out. I'm not so worried about these, the likes of these pine trees or the, the big beech trees down there. We just take the lower branches out. It's more these ones. These ones are a pain because they snag. See how far they're, they're kicking out. They're going to snag on the machinery as it's driving round. So I need to get them taken out. Again, a job for the local timber lads. Right, so I've got uh, a job to... A job list to create and I've been taking notes as we go around so I'm gonna go and gather my thoughts I'm gonna get a cup of coffee get some breakfast with the wife it's still not quite nine o'clock or 9 a.m. I should say so I want to keep that but I've got a feeling that's gonna have to go as well and I'm gonna have to get something more practical Apart from anything else, that's left-hand drive. We're going to need right-hand drive up here. Uh, oh, well. We'll see how we get on. It's a shame because it matches up with the trailer nicely. We'll see. Um, the wife did mention when we were driving up that she'd like to get some chickens in as soon as possible and try her hand at feeding chickens and getting used to the whole idea of being a farmer's wife that's okay that's no problem we'll do that and we probably need to get some more secure fencing around this bit try and keep the chickens out of the field um, and also when he comes out of quarantine dog beard when he arrives because he's in 14 days quarantine before we can put him on the farm um yeah, is he going to be running around out here with the chickens? That's going to be interesting. Um, uh, hey, up! Oh, there's a lady's bike there. I don't remember seeing that. Wife must have ordered that for popping down into the village to do her shopping. Just uh, climb up. Uh, fell off. There we are. If I stand up on this wall, you can see the village is just down there. It's not very far away at all. So it's ideal for the wife to use a push bike and just pop down there to do her shopping. 
Right, so, there we are. We're, uh, we're in and we're starting to get organised at Gatehead Farm. It says Pedigree Holstein, so we might get a few more than those. Uh, Okai the Moo. Yeah. So, this should be an adventure. Tune in for the next episode. This is the Gazbeard, signing out. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody. See you later. Bye for now.